In this lesson, we'll take a look at something called ambient occlusion and how it can be used to generate some really, really nice indirect shadows in your scene. Okay, so I'm going to go back to working with this same alley scene that we've been working with up to this point. Now, if I take a look at the render, uh, just rendering this into the picture viewer using the keyboard shortcut Shift R. So at this point, I really don't have any lights whatsoever set up in my scene. We're pretty much using just the default lighting. So what we can do is uh, add a feature called ambient occlusion. And ambient occlusion is a really, really nice way of introducing some indirect shadowing effects that can really, really help ground objects in your scene. You can see right now, for example, these uh, pipes and other electrical conduits that are on the wall. There's really no shadows to help ground those. It just sort of looks like this is something that is floating in front of the wall. It's hard to tell if this is actually touching the wall or if it's floating several feet in front of the wall. Really can't tell without any sort of shadowing effects in there. So for the time being, I'm going to uh, not use any lights in my scene just so we can really see what this ambient occlusion is going to do for us. So let's start by going into our render settings. We can just go up to render and go into the render settings where we could use the keyboard shortcut, which is control B. Okay. Now to add in ambient occlusion inside of Cinema 4D, it's really, really simple. All we have to do is go into the render settings, go to effect, and choose ambient occlusion. So at that point, we can now uh, basically add in ambient occlusion. And from this point, the ambient occlusion will be applied to our scene whenever we render. So let's take a look at that. Let's once again press Shift R on our keyboard to render this out with some ambient occlusion applied. Now it is going to take just a little bit longer to render this time, but you can see how this just kind of helps to uh, ground things in my scene. So before, you can see without ambient occlusion, and this was able to render almost instantly. It didn't even take one second to render. Now with ambient occlusion applied, you can see how it really just sort of helps ground things. And again, it did take just a little bit longer. In this case, now about five seconds to render this. So what is actually happening with this? Where is this light coming from? Well, ambient occlusion really isn't coming from any sort of a light source. Ambient occlusion is actually a shading trick that uh, Cinema 4D is able to use to sort of simulate the effect of shadows. So what ambient occlusion is doing is if maybe I jump to my right view here. Let's take a look at maybe a part of my scene where sort of these traffic cones are and sort of the curb and the street. So essentially what ambient occlusion is able to do is it looks at any two objects, let's say part of this cone and part of this street, and it tries to find these areas that are very close together. So it tries to identify these as the areas are closer together uh, Cinema 4D is going to add more darkness in the shading of those areas at render time. As we start to get into these areas where the distance between any two surfaces starts to become greater and greater, Cinema 4D is going to apply less and less darkening in those areas until the point where we reach out in these open areas and Cinema 4D is able to look out and send out all these different sort of rays and it can see that there are really no surfaces close to this area and so we don't get any additional shading. So really this ambient occlusion, it's just a distance-based shading trick, but it's really, really helpful for coming in and simulating the effect of these indirect shadows. So you could either use these by themselves, uh, these ambient occlusion shadows, or typically you'd want to use these with some kind of an additional light source. So if I drop in maybe just another light in my scene, and let's maybe pull that back a little bit, maybe raise that up, get that sort of up and out of the way. And we can just quickly maybe drop in some ray traced hard shadows. There we go. And let's just take a quick render of what we have. So we still get some nice direct shadows from that uh, point light. But with this ambient occlusion, it just kind of helps to ground things just a little bit more. So now, if I go back to my render settings, again, that's going to be Control b on my keyboard. And let's just temporarily disable this ambient occlusion. And again, Shift-R to do another render. So now if you compare what I have to what I had before with the ambient occlusion, 
you can see how we still have our direct illumination shadows, but this ambient occlusion just really kind of helps add a little bit more depth and just a little bit more grounding to everything. So I really, really like to use ambient occlusion just about everywhere that I can. It's really, really fast to render, and it's really, really effective. Now, when it comes to the settings for ambient occlusion, it's really pretty straightforward. So we have the uh, minimum and maximum ray length. So this is basically determining how far these rays are able to reach out uh, before they stop influencing each other. So if we set our ray length down really, really small, that means that each point along this surface is going to send out rays, and it's only going to look within a certain distance for any kind of a neighboring object. If there are no neighboring objects within that distance, then we don't get any additional darkening or shading applied to those areas. So if I take my light and maybe just temporarily disable that, and I'll go back to my render settings once again, if I take my maximum ray length, and really drop this down to something like 10 centimeters and re-render that. You can see that the ambient occlusion effect is still there, but it's much more subtle than what we had before. Now consequently, I can also take up my maximum ray length, let's say to a much higher value, so that way these rays are able to look out much further, and that should give me some even stronger indirect shadowing effects. So, depending on the size of your scene and the scale of your scene and how deep and uh, how prominent you want these sh ambient occlusion shadows to be, uh, that will determine what you need to set for your maximum ray length. So this is with the ray length at 10, and this is with the ray length at 500 centimeters. Okay, so a couple of other settings that we have in here. Um, we have the dispersion, the accuracy, and the samples. So the, the dispersion is able to control sort of the softness or the overall spread of our ambient occlusion. So if we take this down to something really, really low, like 1, and again, Shift-R to render, at this point now it gives us something that looks a little bit more like direct shadows. So it's taken my ambient occlusion and really tried to eliminate any of the spread that we may have had before. So any of these really, really soft spread out effects, and now it's trying to really, really focus those down. So depending on the look that you want to go for, uh, you'll probably find that you'll start to get better, a little bit more natural and realistic results by keeping this up a little bit higher, closer to 100. Now we have the accuracy, and this is actually tied into the minimum and the maximum samples. So what's happening is uh, with the mat minimum and maximum samples, Cinema 4D is sort of determining on the fly how many of these rays need to be sent out from our surfaces in order to determine uh, what the shading should be at that point. So based on how much detail is in a certain area, whether it's geometry detail or lighting detail, um, it's going to determine whether or not it's going to send out the minimum number of samples or if it needs to use the maximum number of samples. So more samples is going to give us much smoother results. Now if I come in and maybe just set my samples down to a really, really low value and render that out, you can see we get really, really noisy results. The render happens much, much faster, in this case 3 seconds versus not even 1 second. Uh, but you can see much, much noisier and much dirtier. So when it comes to these samples, um, You'll typically want to keep these up. I find that the default values for most situations actually work really, really well. Now this accuracy is going to determine how Cinema 4D decides whether it's going to use the minimum or the maximum or somewhere in between. So with that accuracy, it's right at 50%. That means uh, Cinema 4D is going to be um, sort of right in the middle of how it uses that. If we start to set that accuracy up to 100%, now at this point, Cinema 4D is going to pretty much rely entirely on whatever we set for the maximum samples. If I set it down to something like 10%, that means it's going to try to use um, the minimum samples a lot more frequently and really only rely on the maximum samples in very, very extreme cases. Again, I find for most situations, the default value of 50% is a pretty good value to go with. Okay, so if at any time you are working with ambient occlusion and maybe you decide not to use it anymore or that you don't want to use it anymore, you could temporarily remove it by just unchecking that checkbox and now the ambient occlusion will no longer be calculated. Or you could just right-click on the ambient occlusion and then just remove that from your render. 
So it doesn't actually delete it. We could always come back and re-enable it by going in and adding that from our effects list. Okay, so that's a look at ambient occlusion and how it can be used as an incredibly useful shading and shadowing feature inside of Cinema 4D.